Hey, this is Mikey Bort for PremiumBeat.com, and in today's After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this tiny room out of a photograph. Now, before I dive into this tutorial, I just wanna remind you that if you have any questions about anything I'm teaching in this tutorial, or really about anything in After Effects altogether, go ahead and ask those in the comments. I'm following on the blog on Premium Beat and also on YouTube, so if you post a comment there or on the blog, I will see them and I can answer them. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. Now, this tutorial, I must confess, is not 100% After Effects. I did use Photoshop for some of this, and so we're gonna start the tutorial in Photoshop, so let's go there now. So here I am in Photoshop, and this indeed is just a photo. And this is a photo I found from Wikipedia Commons. It's a, it's a large repository of lots of free media, and I just needed a picture of a large room. And so what we're gonna do is a little known feature that not a lot of people know about with Photoshop and After Effects integration called Vanishing Point. So I'm in Photoshop, and I'm assuming if you have After Effects, you most likely have Photoshop. So let's, let's go to Filter and then Vanishing Point. Now Vanishing Point will bring up a new window and what you can do is you can create grids and kind of a perspective type thing. And so right here I've got, um, there's the grid tool here and I'm just gonna start in this back corner. I'm gonna just click and I'm gonna bring forward up to about here. See there's this line going across here and you wanna try to create these as square as you can. And then back to this back corner and then it creates this grid. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move this along to cover up the whole floor. Now what I need to do is I need to connect it to the rest of the room. And so how I do that is I hold down Command. I'm on a Mac, so it's probably Control on Windows. And I click right on the edge, and then I can move up to the ceiling. And then I hold down Command, click again, and it's gonna move across the top. I'm going to grab this side down here and cover the wall. And then grab this side and cover this wall. Now this one I'm going to need to then extend to cover up all that. Now that's about all I need to do for this room. Now most people at this point they click OK. I'm not going to click OK because I want to bring this into After Effects. And so right here there's this little tiny menu that's really hard to notice unless you know it's there. And you click on that and it says Export for After Effects.VPE. I'm going to click that. Let's give it a title. Big Room. Click Save. And then we're done in Photoshop. So I just, I'm going to hide this. I'm back in After Effects. And let's import the Vanishing Point file. So I'm going to go to File, Import, Vanishing Point, right there. And let's find that new Vanishing Point file right there, Big Room.VPE. Click Open. And it's going to bring in a folder and a new composition. So let's double click on that composition and here it is. Now it's all kind of askew, but what it's made is it's made a camera, it's made all of these sides, and it's made a parent. So I'm gonna open up the rotation value on the parent and let's kind of straighten this out. So that's already pretty cool. Let's kind of explore this a little bit. Let's open up our camera, let's go to the camera tools and then let's, let's zoom in. You can see instantly this looks like a 3D room. A lot of uh, cool movement that's going on. Now let's let's go ahead and um, let's change these composition settings to something a little more video friendly. Let's go 1280 by 720. Click OK, and that just amazes me. Every time I use Vanishing Point, it amazes me how cool this really is and how easy it is to set up. Let's go in and maybe rotate this a little bit more. Okay. So now let's um, put in some text. Now, uh, some limitations, of course, are you can't, it's not going to show, um, it's not going to show part of the room that wasn't in the picture. But you can see right there, it's kind of a big box what am I doing? Let's zoom this in closer. You can see it's just kind of a big box. 
and the camera is just kind of moving around. But what it does is it, it takes the the texture from the picture and it maps it to these right here is the ceiling or I mean the wall. The back wall there. So you know I can take this. Let's take up the scale. And look at that. I can change the scale of that. That's pretty cool. I'm not going to do that because it's going to mess up how everything looks. But let's um, let's go in, bring the camera back in there, and uh, kind of start moving things around. So you can see right here, down in the corner, I'm not quite close in enough because that's where I didn't have any image. But right here seems to be pretty good. So let's bring in, let's bring in some text. Now. Let's put in Mikey, of course. Make it white. And let's turn this 3D. And it's way back here in the back, so let's bring it forward. Okay, so right there where it's intersecting with the floor, I can see it going through the floor. That's where it is. So let's just make let's just put this on the floor. Make it bigger. And from here we can do, I don't know, let's add a shadow to it. So I'm going to duplicate this, call this layer shadow. Make that black. Let's bring it, let's bring it down. Lay it down on the ground. And maybe we can go into the scale of the shadow. Uh, stretch it further out a little bit in the back. And let's go into effects, blur. Let's just give it a quick fast blur. And let's bring the opacity of the shadow layer down. Now we can also go into the Mikey layer and let's add, let's generate a uh, gradient ramp to kind of get the colors not so such stark white. You know, maybe even add a hint of orange to that. Okay, so there's there's my 3D text and there's my 3D room. Now we can add some camera uh, movement to this. I'm going to go into my camera. Let's go to the transform, keyframe everything. And let's kind of start it past the words like I had in the example let's go forward a couple of seconds maybe move the camera down a little bit and then here we have kind of a move and then reveal of the name Kind of a really kind of a cool technique. Now you can add some little things such as, well, we can go in here and easy ease this, make the movement a little bit more smooth. Now I also want to go in and let's go into the camera settings and add some depth of field. So in the camera options, depth of field, let's turn that on. And then let's crank the blur now the what I want is I want the name to be in focus here so let's adjust the, the focal distance let's bring, bring that blur up really blurry so it kind of makes it look like almost like a tilt shift lens kind of a feel and then let's, uh, let's render that out and that's really all there is to it. Remember, the Photoshop with the vanishing point filter does most of the work for you. I've seen other techniques where they do some sort of camera projection and things like that in After Effects, but honestly, the vanishing point way of doing things is the easiest. It's just, you just have to go in there and kind of map out where the walls are, and there you have this wonderful created 3D room. I'm Mikey Borup for PremiumBeat.com, 
And thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comments. If you're on the blog, just put them in the comments below that. Or if you're on YouTube, put them in the comments there. And I will get to them. Now, if you want to get a hold of me, just feel free to contact me, connect with me on Google Plus or on Twitter. And if you have any other additional questions about After Effects or specifically this tutorial, feel free to ask me. Now, be sure to check out the Premium Beat blog. There's lots of great tips and tricks. There's more than just After Effects tutorials. There's other uh, software tutorials as well, and there's some great um, news about the industry. And if you're looking for some great stock music, make sure you stop by Premium Beat first because they have some of the best in the business. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.